James Harden is the most important player on the Clippers team right now. When it comes to the playoffs, there are a lot of ups and downs. There are a lot of good moments and bad moments. And for a lot of James Harden's career, you know, for the most part, I think there's a lot of good moments, but it ended all horribly. A lot of time has ended bad because he just simply did not perform. And in the recent years, it hasn't really been kind for him either. He had a couple stinkers in Brooklyn, but some may say, though, you know, he had a bad leg. Uh, he didn't really play consistent on the 76ers either. And I think there's a real good reason for it. And it really stems from one thing. He's not as explosive as he once was. And this is huge because this completely changes the dynamic of his game. When he was in Houston, not in the early days, the early days he played a little bit more similar to how he is now. When he was in Houston, he was pretty much a three or a layup or a floater because he was able to either utilize his shot being so well that he can get past his man, but he was also really, really quick. But what happens when you don't have that explosiveness? Right now with the Clippers, we're seeing that he's utilizing the mid-range more, utilizing more of his shot, and if he can get past his defender, you know, he's utilizing more of the floaters. But there's still times where he just simply can't get past his defender. And so a lot of times you see him settling for shots or selling for stepbacks, which by all means he can make. He is the king of stepbacks, okay? It's between him and Luka Doncic recently. But what happens when your shot is not fair? And that is something that when you watch the series between the 76ers and the Celtics, you saw that, well, he was able to get 45 points a game or two, but what happened on the rest of the games? He didn't really do that great. Now, some might say that that's because Joel Embiid came back, changed up the flow dynamic of the offense, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, they are correct to a certain degree, but he never shot that great either. Now, there are times where he doesn't shoot, and that is a definite problem. But when he is shooting, you can clearly tell whether or not the game is going to go well for him or not. Because if his shots are going in, you can say that, okay, cool, the game is probably going to go well. He already has a great facilitating game, so he'll be able to dime up players, especially if those come to help. But don't expect James Harden to be the player to consistently give you 28 points like he did against the Dallas Mavericks game one. And this is coming from a person who really enjoys watching his game. But I have to be a thousand percent honest if I'm going to give you a critique on his game, especially with him being the most critical piece to the team's success. Now, I believe that there's a lot riding on him, especially when you think about his career and think about the narrative around his career. You know, being a quote unquote playoff choker is not something that you definitely want. And being on the team where the, another, the best person next to you is also a quote unquote playoff choker is not great as well. But I will say he is playing the best he's played ever since he transitioned into a fully point guard role. Uh, having great role players around you is going to be able to kind of like break the load off your shoulders a little bit. But as we see in the regular season is that sometimes he kind of doesn't understand when to call his own number until is kind of too late and so he has to take the balancing act of figuring out okay cool what do i do here when do i call my own number when do i keep my teammates involved and that could be a very difficult thing for a person like him to do and so that's why you you see that his his, his scoring stats have pretty much diminished and that's really in compensate for the fact that his assist stats have pretty much skyrocketed since his early Houston days. Now, this doesn't mean that I think that he is a bad scorer by any means necessary. I don't think he's a bad scorer at all, but it really shows that the fluidity in his game really is determining on the fact that if he has a good shooting night, he's going to have a pretty good night. But if his shooting is pretty much subpar or just average, you might not see the best James Harden that night. And that is the crux of the Clippers issue for me, is that James Harden, when he's good, he's great. When he's great, he's great. But when he's good, it can be a little bit more of a tug and pull, especially if he's sitting in that limbo space of, do I facilitate or do I call my own number? Now, it's great when you have teammates like Paul George and teammates like Kawhi Leonard, and so you're not the number one option. But when Kawhi Leonard is out and we don't know when he'll be back, it really comes to show, okay, cool. What do you do when you are pretty much are the scoring option and the facilitator? And we saw that in game one, he was really, really aggressive against the Mavericks. Really, really aggressive. Actually played pretty good defense as well on the backside help. And you know me, I love talking about defense. Defense is one of my favorite aspects of the game. The aggressiveness is something that I really, really like to see, regardless of the fact of how he got his 28 points and eight assists. It really comes down to how aggressive was he. I felt like in the first game, 
he was really good at getting his teammates involved early i.e in evok zubak which he got like 10 12 points within the first half he was able to really get a lot more people involved and of course this rust to harden connection when it comes to lobs is always there whenever russ's uh baseline defender plays a little bit too up and leaves the back door wide open so they can't play the oop and james harden is like a monster when it comes to that he's a mechanic he knows exactly when to throw it when to when to do it and also to still get more and more teammates involved so that connection is always there but in general, I just feel like he came out with a little bit tad more aggressiveness. And I wonder if this is something to do with Tyron Lue's coaching to get more and more of his players to feel uh, more locked in than they usually are. Because you kind of also saw that in Paul George as well. That Paul George was a little bit more fast paced. He was a little bit more aggressive as well. And that is really good to see, especially when you're going against a team who basically is one of the toughest matchups you'll have to face until you get to a tougher matchup, whether it be, you know, the, the Thunder or the Nuggets, whoever it may be. And so their playoff run is not going to be as easy or as simple as anybody else's because each team that they're going against is uniquely matched up to play against them. You know, when you look at, let's say, like the Denver Nuggets, they have great bigs, they have great guards, they're pretty good defense and their offense is sublime the clippers are going to have to pretty much be on it when it comes to defense especially james harden being the person who's going to get players involved but be putting a lot of pick and roll action between jamal murray and Jokic. i can definitely see them matchup hunting against james harden especially if he's not that quick coming off the screens and so it's really depending on whether or not the Clippers are going to be working well as a team. If they play them, if they play the Oklahoma City Thunder, if they play the Minnesota Timberwolves, it's really going to be a difficult matchup. And I think a lot of players around the league and the scouting report probably easily says that James Harden is not as explosive as he once was. And so we can utilize that against them. And so they're probably going to start to take away, even in this Dallas series, take away his mid-range. If they could take away his mid-range and say, listen, you're going to have to fully get past me. I probably get a little bit more blocking fouls, but you have to fully get past me in order for you to score. And we have Derek Lively in the paint. What is his viability on offense? It will probably just go back to just being a facilitator, which is great. But part of his genius is that he can do both. He can do both and he can do both efficiently. And so the James Harden is the most important player in their success. A lot of people will say maybe Paul George, maybe Kawhi Leonard, but there's nobody more important than the person who can score and a person who can facilitate, especially when the offense revolves almost uniquely around James Harden and his prowess. Of course, there's always going to be isos and matchup huntings that Tyron Lou loves to do. And he always loves to get uh, Kawhi Leonard in the post up or Paul George on the iso top of the key whenever he can. But for the most part, the offense is strictly ran through James Harden. And so I'm really eager to see how the rest of the series is going to go. Is he going to show a little bit more, you know, relapse back into the norm of, well, if his shot's not on, we don't know how he'll play. Or will he actually start to implement more things to his game to make him more of a difficult person to defend? I hope as a James Harden fan in me that he becomes a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more explosive in his first step to get past people into the hoop. And we even saw that in the first game a little bit, but he had to kind of muscle his way through. And so I hope that he continues to try to muscle his way through and get more drives to his left side and get more drives to his left side because that's what really opens up his game a lot more. Because when his shot is not there, man, I'm telling you, it is very difficult to watch because he continue, he will continue to shoot it or he won't shoot it. Either way, it's really bad. But this first game against the Dallas Mavericks is a really, really good showing. And I think that if James Harden continues to play the way that he does, the Clippers might have a championship on the horizon.